Okay, so in this video, we're going to go through another example of a, a line integral in three, ver in three variables. So basically, we have it in written in this form, which is different from what we have seen using the element ds. And we're given that the curve that we're parameterizing with respect to is uh, basically just the finest thing. So we have x equals the cosine of t, y equals sine of t, and z equals t squared. And we're given the limits of integration, so this is just a full revolution. So you can imagine that this is kind of like a helix, but because you have this set term here, it's t squared, it's going to look a little bit different. Okay, so the first thing to do is to find out what dx, dy, and dz are, because we already know what x, y, and z are. We can just substitute back in, but we need to know what those elements are going to be. So dx over dt, we're going to take the first component of this parametric curve and now we're going to differentiate it with t. So this becomes minus sine of t. And then we're going to do the same for y. So dy over dt, we're going to differentiate this element. This gives us cosine of t. And then for the last one, we're going to have dz over dt and this is going to be 2t. Now if we rearrange, we can say dx equals to minus sine of t times dt and then dy is going to be equal to cosine of t times dt and z is going to be dz is going to be 2t times dt so now what we do is we grab our line integral and now we're going to rewrite it in terms of this new parameter so we're going to start by plugging in the limits so 0 to 2 pi now here we have y so that corresponds to this parameterization here so this is sine of t now we have the element dx here, which is going to be this one, so minus sine of t dt. So that's basically this whole element, dx. Now the next one is going to be plus cosine of t. And we're going to multiply by the element dy, which is this whole thing, cosine t dt. And then the last one is going to be this element, z t squared times the element dz, so that's 2t times dt. So now we just regroup the terms, and let's see what we get. 2 pi here, we're going to get minus sine squared t, then plus cosine squared t, plus t squared. But remember, we have this times that, so this is actually going to be 2 times t cubed. And all of this with respect to t. And then you might think, oh, maybe we could replace this by 1. But we have this negative sign in here. So clearly that's not going to be an option. So we're just going to have to do some trigonometric substitutions here. So we're going to do the, the following substitution. So for this one, we're going to have minus half of 1 minus cosine of 2t. Then for this one, we're going to have half of 1 plus cosine of 2t. And I'm just using some standard uh, trigonometric substitutions here. And then the last one is just 2t cubed dt, so this whole thing here. All right, so let's see what we get from this. Let's just expand this out. So this becomes minus half. This becomes plus half of cosine 2t. This one here is going to be plus half, plus half of cosine 2t, and then plus 2t cubed. Alright, so immediately we notice that this term and that term are going to cancel out, and then we can add these two up, so that's going to be replaced by the following. So we're going to get cosine of 2t plus 2t cubed dt. And now we integrate that. So we're going to get this one is going to become sine. So half of sine 2t. This one is going to be plus t to the power of 4 over 4. So that's going to cancel out. We're going to have half of t to the power of 4 from 0 to 2 pi. And we can probably take out that half, so we're going to have half of this, 2t plus t to the power of 4, 
2 pi and 0. Well, what's going to happen for this, we're going to have 0 here because this is an integer multiple of pi and then 0, that's going to be so 0 for, for this term. We don't care about that one. We're going to get half of 2 pi to the power of 4, so 2 pi to the power of 4. So 2 to the power of 4, that becomes 16. Then pi to the power of 4, and then this over 2. So this becomes 8 times pi to the power of 4. And this is going to be our final answer. So this is the value of the line integral that we started with here originally. And you notice that it's pretty straightforward. It, it's just a matter of practice. Once you know exactly what your parameterization is and what your limits of integration are, it, is, it just becomes a matter of just finding the elements of integration, dx, dy, dz, as we did here, and then just plugging everything in and then just simplifying the expression so you can just uh, integrate it with the methods that you already know from single variable calculus. But that's pretty much it. This is how you evaluate uh, line integrals for functions of three variables.